to Libertarian Counterpoint. I am your host, James Just, and with me today is Mr. John Cameron, our author extraordinaire. And <laughs> joining us tonight is Christine Bish. She is running Hello. for the sixth congressional district here in California. If memory got it served, did I get that right? You are right. Oh man, good thing, because I didn't look that up until just before time. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have plenty of cards, bumper stickers, signs to remind you. Ah, good. Yes, and everybody else out there. So if you if you want to learn more about Christine, where can you find where can you find her? At bishforcongress.com. It's B I S H for Congress.com. And it is uniform. You can find me on Twitter, uh, X I guess they call it now, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. But my name is Christine Bish and uh, I cannot wait to be your servant in Washington. You mean not the master? You want to be the servant? I want to serve. What, are, what kind of strange politician are you listening to the will of the people? I'm, I'm the strange politician that isn't going there for myself. Huh? You know, I am 58-year-old grandma and I am applying for a new job because of our economy, the crime, the what's coming over the border, the child trafficking, the drug trafficking. You know, all of those unaccompanied minors, where are they? I want to know where they are. I know where the drugs are, because you can find those people laying on the street. You see the dealers just uh, being released. And, you know, I, I have to give credit to Sheriff Cooper. He is doing everything he can. Mm. Um, it's Sacramento who's stopping him from doing his job. Uh, but I am so impressed with what he is doing. Um, how he's trying to get on top of crime while we try and fix Prop 47 that created a, a well, big the, point of the have, mayhem here. Why do they need 11 new bills to fix one bad one? Why don't they just get rid of the old bad one? It, it's <laughs> <laughs> well, because, John, you know they want things more complicated, not less complicated. No, seriously, just overthrow <laughs> the, the bad law. Just say, you know, let's put it... Here, let's get rid of it. Instead, they've got to write 11 new or 12 new bills. It's because of the way that they wrote Prop 47. Oh. Mm. It's um, just unwrite it. Just the way. Well, you know, it sounds simple to me, and and I, I'm game. Yeah. You know, maybe I should run for governor so I can just well, start uh, undoing uh, these uh, things. Uh, oh, sorry, we're having technical eyes on my on my. Okay, uh, well I can keep right, talking. Technical issues on my side. So John, <laughs> can you guys continue on? Okay, uh, what do we go? want to? What's, throw a subject out and we'll. All right, so let's bring up okay. the first subject. Biden administration has announced indictments on sanctions targeting Russian disinformation ahead of the U.S. elections. John, let's well, see what we've got uh, on you thinking about this. I, I think. Why, uh, would the, why would the timing is very suspicious? Isn't the it? The timing is very suspicious. That Russians uh, are are. Total incompetence about this. My my theory is that they're waving this flag now, so that they can, under the guise of protecting us from Rus Russia disinformation, which they brought up twice during Trump uh, uh, campaigns, and both times were complete lies. The Russians actually favored uh, somebody else, but they were so ineffective they had no sway over anything that happened during the elections. Is so that they can shut down. Uh, honest American media uh, and worldwide media and the names of protecting us from Russian disinformation. Um, people are smart enough to, to uh, figure out what's dis, miss, and malinformation. And if they're not, maybe they shouldn't vote. You know, it's not that hard to figure out reality. You just do a little research. Uh, don't go to Google. <laughs> uh, duck, duck, go. You know, go to some of the some of the great organizations out there that are are are, are uh, objective. Like, let's look at Reason, for example. Uh, go to X because X is self policing. You know, if somebody puts BS up on X, within a microsecond of it going up, you have 15 people calling BS. Yes. You know, so here's study after study after study. No, this is what that person actually said, not what you're quoting. You're basically inventing stuff. You don't need government's policing information or the press uh, because of things like X, formerly Twitter. We police ourselves, which is the way it, which is the way it should be. So I'm very suspicious of this timing. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if you dived even deeper that you'll find out that these so-called Russian bots and uh, misinformation machines are actually 
paid for by some thinly washed cash through an NGO that our government supports. Well, I not just be shocked that. Uh, like China. Well, Christine, <laughs> um, here's a question. We have, uh, does America not do the same thing? Go off and spread dis, misinformation, and malinformation across the world, including into Russia and other countries? Into China. That's kind of been hypocrisy, isn't it? It's a bit hypocritical yeah. for us to be complaining about other people. Well, we overturned a completely, uh, well, I don't know how honest any elections are anymore, but a, a, <laughs> I'm an, working a, on it. <laughs> an, an elected uh, government in the Ukraine, we went in and basically pulled the coup. So if we're, we're going to be upset about people interfering in our elections, we should stop interfering with other people's elections. Well, we are interfering with our own elections. Look at Kamala Harris. Yeah. I mean, they pulled a coup on Joe Biden. Yeah. You know, offered him ice cream and off he tootled. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I've won more primaries in this election than Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris has never won a primary. Exactly. I just won the one. Yeah. There you go. So I'm ahead of her already. That's right. She did. She was anointed. Right. She was she anointed. She yes. Was appointed. That's right. She didn't run for not a Senate. single vote. And and I, the Democrat National uh, Convention that. talks exactly. That is the example. Don't worry about who the people voted for, because there were challenges to Joe Biden. But he wasn't going to win, so the only one that they could get had to be Kamala. Mm. Yeah, she was anointed once Once the donors, let's be clear, everybody's blaming Pelosi, but it wasn't Pelosi. Pelosi was the hatchet man for the donors. And yes. the donor class decided who was running and who was not. And that, when we're talking about protecting democracy, that should be the thing above all else that bothers mm. people. Um, it's no surprise to me that they did this. I mean, a few years ago, if you, anybody who is a Bernie Sanders supporter knows that the oh, course... Oh, he got the shaft, yeah. The course just told him, yeah, they lied to you, but they're allowed to. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's what right. happened. Okay, well, so I'm, part of this is vocabulary. We need to change this from the donor class to the oligarchs. Just like Russia. I would call them the nomenclatura. But let's just use, I mean, oligarch is a relatively new term, you know, out of the Soviet Union. Yeah. But it is, it is oligarchy, because when you look at these mm -hmm. people are voting themselves back into power to keep the, the, the big uh, uh, stream of money that's coming to them almost directly from the government so they can clean a little bit of it and give it back to the politicians so that they can get reelected, give them more money. And so oligarchs is good, nomenclature is good, the ruling class is good, the ruling elites, whatever you want to call them. And, and what, what, I don't know if a lot of people are aware of this, and I'm just going to throw it into this whole uh, election interference thing. The U.S. government gives money to NGOs, non-governmental organizations, mm -hmm. to carry out policy and pretends like they're not doing it. And it's basically laundering money uh, to do stuff that's illegal for the U.S. government to do, and they have uh, nonprofits do it for them, and you know Soros seeding all of these radical environmental groups, and then once they're in power, he stopped funding them. Who funded them? The United States government. So they're basically an arm of the United States government. It's incest incestuous. It's incestuous is a very good word. That and, is the perfect uh, word. Yeah. Well, we're going to move on here for a second because <laughs> I've got we've got two stories coming up about. Um, other countries interfering in the United States. So we've got China has now been, we've had an aide to two New York governors, so we can get the an story up and on her husband. To two New York governors, um, Hochul and Cuomo, there was an aide Cuomo, that yeah. to, ended up, she was a... She was chief agent. of staff for a yeah. while. Yeah. 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 She was an agent of the Chinese government, just Chinese spy, quite literally a spy. And then oh, down in San Francisco, so it goes coast to coast, all across the member, they essentially have, um, you know, a few months ago, six, seven months ago, we brought you stories about uh, Chinese having police stations, uh, essentially hidden in police stations in the U.S. cities, yeah. and they found another one down in the Bay Area in San Francisco. So can we, can we do we have the screen up here, guys? Thank you very much. So we've got, um, so there, he, there she is, the aide who is, is now Chinese spy, and then we've got Chinese Communist Party is targeting people exercising their First Amendment rights in San, down here in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the Chinese government does not like people. Dissent. Any dissent kind of, of dissent. any kind. Now, it, 
which in California is kind of reminiscent of California, does it not? Mm. California seems to not like dissent very much. But before mm. I go too far off, is how disturbing is this is that we have, on one hand, we're so worried about other countries engaging in, in this behavior, but you know, it's hard for me to get upset about this knowing the behavior of the United States government. Well, we Afghanistan, right? We yeah. went in there and tried to change government. We, uh, Cuba, uh, how many countries in South America? Basically every Middle Eastern um, country. Uh, we pick sides in all the wars, support one side, the other side. We've, we, we supported some, some horrible fascists in um, uh, South America because they weren't communist, and now we're basically supporting communists uh, in South America. We have done nothing uh, to put pressure on Venezuela to get uh, uh, rid of a guy who uh, basically stole an election. Mm -hmm. uh, and why? Because he's a socialist, and socialism is popular in, in our country now because people go to public schools and they learn nonsense. So, um, you know, we're, we've been interfering in, we've interfered in more elections by providing capital, by providing arms, by providing propaganda than any modern state since the turn of the last century, turn of the century before last. Hey John, you know, we didn't do nothing to about Maduro. We did steal his airplane. <laughs> It so. wasn't his airplane anyway. He, was, he stole it from somebody else. <laughs> so we, we stole a stolen airplane. Stole, stole. No, but what I want to know about this is I want to see the contracts. I, I am uh, an investigator. I'm a financial investigator, real estate, uh, paper trails. That is what I am really, really good at. So if we have Chinese police stations in San Francisco, are they, how are they operating? How do they get the buildings? What is the funding? Uh, you, you know, we know from just the building that we're in that it can't be a school anymore, so it's used for public access and, and other community things. So what I wanna see is the paper trail. Who approved that? Who's funding that? Yeah, where's, where's the, the money coming from? Is it part of that PPE money? I know right here in Sacramento, they, uh, we, this county board of supervisors bought a $13,000 building, I think it was in 2021, and they paid $23 million for it. $13 now, million or 13, you said 13000 It was a thir or sorry, $13 million building that the county board of supervisors paid $23 million for to house the homeless that they could never put the homeless in. So now we're paying for private security to keep the homeless out of the building that we paid almost double for. Hmm. So the, where's the paper trail? And where's I've been trail? down that paper trail. I want to know what the paper trail is on this. And if I wasn't running for Congress, I'd be all over it. But when I'm elected, I can promise you I'm all over it. Yeah, yeah. And, you know. Where is the paper trail? In, I'm disturbed. Yes. No, no, I'm disturbed by this. I'm and disturbed the, by my reaction yeah. to this. Because I should be outraged, upset, something. And I just don't care. I, d I look at how the United States has behaved and I shrug my shoulders. I say, well, we get what we, we reap what you sow. <laughs> and I don't know, it feels wrong to me. That it feels, that my, own, my, own, my own emotion feels wrong to me on this well, thing. I think, I think you, you, are, you are getting to the point where, where the uh, oligarchs or nomenclature, the people pulling the strings, because obviously Biden wasn't running the country and, and uh, Kamala, bless her heart, uh, is too stupid to run anything. It's whoever was in the bunny suit. Well, no, I mean, I'm That's saying, who's in charge. Who, who is pulling the strings? And these people are unelected. Why is there not, why is there not outrage at the fact that um, the people that we supposedly elect the country are not, or they're simply mouthpieces for people that we don't know? There, there are ciphers. They're the, the wizard behind the curtain. Why don't people want to know this? Are they so stupid, the general populace, that they are unconcerned that they really have no control over anything? That if they elect someone, that person's not running it because it's whoever's actually pulling the strings running it. it, it so, it's not a matter of stupidity. Yeah. It, it is a matter of... They're not educated. They don't understand. There are a lot of conservatives, libertarians, Democrats, um, 
cons more conservative, the, the JFK Democrats, if you will, that, that we all have to ex uh, accept responsibility for what's going on. So while we're working our jobs and our kids are going to school and we're saving for vacations and, and putting in a pool or doing whatever it is that we've been involved in in our lives, we forgot that every citizen has a civic responsibility. Uh, voting, it, it's not a right, it's a privilege. And, and we have people who wait in line, pay money to be here, to be part uh, of this amazing country, and to have earned that privilege that's given to many of us by birth. Uh, uh, so I would say that it's, it's more ignorance than stupidity. Well, they just don't know. I, I'm, uh, I can I've, actually kind of put it enough. It's not ignorance, ignorance, stupidity, it's exhaustion. They don't have time. Well, that is, see, that I believe You're working is the goal. 10, 12 hours the, a day. The goal, the goal by, of whoever is they are, let's call them oligarchs or whatever, their goal is to get people to be so worn down and so frazzled that they accept this as a condition and not a problem. If you accept it as a condition, it's something to be endured. They, they want you, us to accept feeling powerless so that they can do whatever they want. It's battered because, woman syndrome. Yeah. yeah. So if we, are, uh, if we feel as if it's a condition, we just hunker down. You endure, you don't, you don't fight the sun in Sacramento in the summer. It's a condition, you endure it. So if we have the mindset that this is just nonsense that goes on in the background, we must endure it. Like people in the Soviet Union endured the, the corruption and the inefficiency and the lies and all the rest of that. We're getting to the point where we are simply hunkering down, bending our shoulders against it and ignoring it. That's the goal of these people in power. We have to accept the fact that we do have power. We can ask questions. We can, we can bang on their doors. We can send them emails. We can call them to task and meetings and all the rest of that, and they can't put us in jail except well, for that one place. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. we're actually gonna, we've got, Richard has some things to say about this. Yeah. Freedom okay. of speech, you know, we were sitting here talking about our freedom to speak, our right to speak, our necessity to yeah. speak, but that speech is under threat. Let's see what Richard has to say about the freedom of speech and the press. Hi, this is Richard Fields with this week's report from the fields. Freedom of speech and of the press is being shut down all over the world. At first, gradually, and then suddenly. The gradual part started during the pandemic after Joe Biden and Kamala Harris were elected. The preferred government narrative was that COVID was extremely deadly, that masks, social distancing, economic lockdowns, and other gross violations of basic civil rights were necessary to prevent the so-called pandemic from killing millions. All of those edicts were issued not by Congress, but by the executive branch of the federal and some state and local governments. When intelligent people questioned the origin of the disease, its alleged lethality, and the trade-offs necessary to comply with all the edicts, those voices were ridiculed and marginalized. The mainstream press, led by the New York Times, Washington Post, and the TV and cable networks, fell into line immediately and gave little to no voice to the dissenting voices. Those of us who questioned the narrative, and who, by the way, were largely scientifically and rationally correct on social media, found that we were subject to being effectively censored there. Dozens of deep state agencies, from the Federal Bureau of Investigation to the Department of Homeland Security to the Centers for Disease Control, established direct channels to Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and the rest of the social media platforms. The platforms were warned against propagating disinformation, misinformation, and malinformation. Malinformation, by the way, is information that is true, but inconvenient to the government. The implicit threat was that if they did not comply with the regulatory agency requests, dire regulatory changes would be forthcoming for social media platforms. Billionaire user of Twitter, Elon Musk, did not take kindly to being censored on that platform, so he bought the company. The Twitter files he instigated, publicized by liberal journalist Matt Taibbi and others, 
documented that without question, Twitter had been kowtowing to dictates by the aforementioned deep state agencies. In the last couple of weeks, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg has admitted that Facebook was similarly extorted. Censorship has been bad in America. It's also bad in Europe and other countries. France just arrested Pavel Durov. The charges are that he essentially ignored pressure from the government of France to censor the users of his messaging system, Telegram. The charges are, in essence, that he did not police Telegram's users for the plat for using the platform to talk about child sex trafficking, drug trafficking, fraud, and the big one, failing to cooperate with authorities. The case is strikingly similar to the case of Ross Albrook, who is now incarcerated for multiple lifetime sentences for allowing the same kind of discussions to occur on his website, The Silk Road. Durov left Russia, his country of birth, for similarly failing to knuckle under to Russian demands for information on the users of Vontati. The social media site had grown to be, at least in Russia, more popular than Facebook. And just last week, Brazil suspended Elon Musk's ex, formerly Twitter, for spreading fake news and hate speech. They also froze the financial assets of Musk's Starlink internet service in Brazil. We've arrived at the suddenly part. It's important not to be fooled by government propaganda that the reasons for these attacks on free speech, it's not about child pornography, drugs, or fraud, except at the periphery. It's about total government control of the narrative, the news that people are allowed to hear and what they must be prevented from hearing. It's also vitally important to remember, always remember, that it's not the good guys who want to be censors. It's the tyrants or would-be tyrants. Tyranny is flexing its muscles. That's this week's report from the fields. See you again next week. Thank you, Richard. You know, we here on the show experienced that shadow banning and getting you know, shows kicked off of social media because we talked about things and, and we talked about things in ways that they didn't like. We didn't change our words. We didn't stop. Mm -hmm. We didn't say, well, we're not going to use, well, we used COVID. We didn't say, we didn't say the, you know, the thing that cannot be named. Mm -hmm. We actually named it. Mm -hmm. And because of that, because we weren't willing to talk around it, we uh, were shadow banned. When, when, did, and when did we talk about uh, the fact that it came out of a lab? Oh, we uh, talked about, about, the, about, right about the, from the start. same time it came out of the lab. And, and uh, that was, and now we're finding that, um, that Fauci and his gang of thugs uh, went so far uh, as to misspell words so that when they were hit with a FOIA request, they wouldn't be able to find their conversations where they were basically censoring what everybody agreed was probably a lab leak right from the beginning. But I want to talk about um, the, um, this push to censor is, uh, you know, that isn't it strange that, that the, the Republicans used to be thought of as the fascists and people that were suppressing First Amendment rights, and now the only people in this country, that libertarians and Republicans, are supporting First Amendment rights. Robert Reich, uh, the, the, one of the mouthpiece economists that's constantly being quoted in the New York Times, the other one is that other clown that's, that used to be an economist, now he's just a mouthpiece. But he said that we have to, we have to censor this hate speech. Uh, we have to take control of X because of all of the hate speech and the racism and the call to arms and blah 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 that's happening on it. It can't go on. Uh, and if I, you I, look I, do, on I, need, I need to run up because there's this one topic uh, we don't want to catch this yeah. next one because it's Christine. It's, it's an issue that's close to her campaign. Yeah. Um, California Democrats are attacking local school boards for essentially, they're trying to take control of the local school boards. You know, one of the things they used to tell you to do is, if you don't like what's going on, you go join your local school board. And, but mm -hmm. now they're essentially taking the power away mm -hmm. from the local school boards to make these kind of decisions. And Christine, I really wanted to hear, hear from you, because it's not, the issue isn't the issue, right? The issue is the bigger issue that you have the state trying to take control of the school board, not just the single issues. Well, it's not about taking control of the school board, it's taking control of the children. It's taking the control away from 
from parents who ultimately have the voice, uh, the obligation, the constitutional right to care for their children. So what we what we're finding out in in AB 1955, where they said you know they can uh, it bypass a parent to uh, not notify them if they're going to transgender a child. Well, the Constitution, the 14th Amendment, when we freed the slaves, that was, that was one of the things that, that came out of that, is there were so many children born into slavery, and I'm oversimplifying it, that were born into slavery, that it was important that we uh, included that in the Constitution, that their biological parents they were the caregivers. They were the people who were entrusted to care for their children, to make their decisions, so that the slave owners couldn't claim, well, these are property, they, you know, and, and separate parents from their children. So I truly believe what we have going on in the California legislature, it is about separating parents from their children and I believe this is part of a national security issue. If you've got an entire generation of children who cannot read, who cannot write, who cannot do math, and cannot determine what is the right bathroom to use, those children will never have the confidence and the self-awareness to join the military, to pick up arms, and defend themselves or this country. Because they're, ra they're trying to take a generation and make them victims as opposed to independent, strong, educated people who have the ability to compete in a global market. That's an interesting perspective because I was, I've been thinking um, the last few years that we have created this victim culture where it's your, your self-worth seems to come from you being a victim. Mm. And that is a it's a recipe for failure long term, right? You can get through a few years like that, but at some point you are going to just kind of collapse under that weight because you can't be a victim your entire life because it, you have no control then. Well, you very you have no very, sense of responsibility for yourself. We're, we were talking, I talked earlier about the fact that uh, um, there's an attempt to make people believe that things are conditions instead of problems. If you believe that you're constantly being victimized, then you lose the will at some point uh, or even won't attempt to change the circumstances. John, that sorry, we're out of time, Christine. Thank you for being thank here. You. John, thank you for being here tonight. Thank, thank you, everybody, you. for watching. Thank you for watching. Please remember to love everybody and have a good night.